All right, welcome everybody. Hope you're having a good day so far. You're getting to see lots of things. Got all fired up by the keynote and everything that's, that's going on today at TC19. Um, I'm Bryce Gartner. I am the CEO, which stands for Chief Experience Officer in our world, um, at ESIMO. We're a Tableau partner. We've been a Tableau partner for nine years. And as a Tableau partner, what we do is we help people see and understand their data more quickly. That's what I try and do. Um, I also happen to be an adjunct professor at the Duke University Graduate School, Fuqua School of Business, where I teach data visualization. And in teaching data visualization, we talk a lot about what are the possibilities of visualization and how all that comes into play. You know, at ESIMO, I get this really cool opportunity to work with clients all over the world, with our team, and understand what challenges people have. And earlier this year, Tableau introduced the blueprint. And one of the things that I think is so amazing is how they broke it into pieces. And one of those pieces is evolution. So my presentation today is going to be about how Tableau, how can I fully evolve my opportunity to share analytics with Tableau? And so to do that, we're going to talk about how evolution looks. How does Tableau define evolution? How do we really think about taking that evolution and making sure we're thinking about our audience? We're thinking about how we make audience-based visualizations, how we advance that with analytics to make the most of our opportunities, and then how we can use embedding to become even more successful than we thought we could be both internally and in external usage use cases. What I get excited about speaking to everybody up here, how many people in the audience, by show of hands, how many of you have been asked to do something with Tableau and you're just recreating a report that already existed, but you're doing it with a new platform? Right? I, I liken that experience to this concept where we don't evolve with Tableau. We just replace what we're already doing with Tableau. And it's incumbent on us to start to really take the value of data visualization and make sure we, we put the platform to full use. And we can only do that if we're thinking about it as an evolutionary step. If we, if we make sure that in our organization we can talk about, yes, I can redo a report, but what we really want to think about is how we evolve. Now, there are a lot of steps to the evolutionary process. Tableau has defined it with the blueprint into some very specific steps, what I have shaded here. When we think about this in the agility proficiency, one of the elements is, hey, how do we monitor? How do we maintain? What are we thinking about when we monitor and maintain? And how do we make sure we know our users, our end users, our viewers, our explorers are consuming what we're giving them? How do we know that they're getting a good experience when we do that? Because part of the evolution of data visualization is not only being able to tell a good story and build our narrative, but it is also about how do we make sure we're engaging them? How do we measure that as part of proficiency? How do we take also our analytics best practices and more importantly, our visualization best practices? How do we take that and make sure we start to incorporate that. To a, to a lot of times an audience that just says, hey, I want that same report, I just now I'm gonna get it through Tableau. How do we do that? Well, part of it is we really have to think about how we want to approach that. And then as Tableau has put in the blueprint, we wanna talk about our engagement model. How do we give engagement and support so people understand that visualization actually drives better understanding and more actionable insights in their information. And how do we help, as those people that are building these insights and these visualizations, how do we take that to the next level so they know how to take action or ask that next question? One of the things I, I spend a lot of time talking to my students about at Duke is a big part of creating good visualizations and creating a strong narrative surrounds what are the questions you're asking? Are we asking deep 
thoughtful questions or are we asking the simple questions that we could answer with a simple report? And are we thinking about how that impacts our audience? So when we think about that, we have to think about how we engage our community and our audience in our data story. When we think about driving evolution, especially when we talk about monitoring and measuring and engaging, we have to think about how can we do that. Well, Tableau gives us all sorts of information. And at ESIMO, what we've done is we've, we've put all of this information together in a product we call Team Suite. Team Suite is where we've exposed everything in Postgres. It's what you see over here. Everything that's exposed in the Postgres, we've built into this series of dashboards and we've productized it and put it in a really easy to use package that helps us identify those key things. Who's using it? How is the server, how are visualizations performing? What content is driving consumption? And who and how are we engaging? And, oh yeah, how are we governing that to some degree? Because we need to know and we need to make it easier to understand who has access to what. And so Team Suite was designed to specifically help drive our evolution. I was talking with a customer the other day who really had had Tableau installed for three and a half years and they had really never taken the time to look at it and they got this great insight from Team Suite. That insight was their COO and the COO staff wasn't really using the content that was designed and built for the COO. They were still relying on some of their old Excel reporting because they were comfortable with it. They identified a training opportunity and also an opportunity to share some additional information because we did these things. We monitored, we measured, we maintained by making changes, and we engaged with the audience. Now Team Suite facilitates that, but I encourage all of you to think about that. Are you using all the data Tableau collects in the Postgres repository to analyze and know who are your champions? Who are the people that might need a little more training? How do we get more engaged with that group? The next step in our evolution is to challenge what we're capable of. You all are here at TC19 to learn more about what other people are doing, how to do more with Tableau. Well, we have to think about how we challenge ourselves to do more than just that cross tab. How do we do more than just that bar chart? And a lot of times we feel like we're limited. Well, Tableau doesn't give me all the capabilities I want to have the full creativity. I mean, we, it gives us a, a, a plethora of options, but maybe we don't feel like it gives us everything we need. Well, I'm gonna challenge that thinking. All of these visuals that are on this screen were built in Tableau natively. This is not anything embedded. This is not anything where we use JavaScript or any HTML or anything to add on. All of these are just dashboards built inside Tableau. You have to be willing to challenge yourself on what's possible with the tool. Whether we're looking at our Facebook, our overall social media dashboard, we're digging in specifically to Facebook, or we're digging in to Instagram, all of these items are just dashboards that were built in Tableau, where we challenge what I call the art of possible. If we don't put in front of our end users what's possible with visualizations and let them pull us back based on what, what they want, they don't know what we're capable of. And too many times I watch our clients, I watch our teams, and sometimes I even watch our organization hold ourselves back because we don't want to play with the art of possible. But the art of possible is where we can tell more effective stories. We can grab the attention. We can be more engaged with our audience. So we think a lot about the art of possible. We also think about this in terms of audience-based visualization. Now, what does that mean? Well, one of, the, one of the interesting statistics 
is most adults in the US, our attention span is between seven and eight seconds. What that means is, is we have to use our data to tell that story and we've got to grab their attention and we need to think about it as if our analytics are meant for an audience that we have to grab their attention and we have to engage with them in a way that they're comfortable with. We have to engage them in the way that they want to be. It's not about me. A lot of times we say, well, you don't like this. Well, it's, it's what I wanted to do, right? We've got to get in the mentality of what does someone need to see? We need to clearly define who our audience is. What, if we were building an advertisement that we needed them to pay attention to and they wanted to buy our product, that's what our analysis is. We want them to buy into what information we're sharing and why do we want to do that? And why do we think about this in a different perspective? We think about this in a different perspective because if we get them to buy into it, then our organizations run more effectively. Organizations that are using data in their daily interactions are much more successful than those that aren't. So if we think about our analytics and driving and walking in our audience's shoes and thinking about them as a target audience like we would think about our customers, then what we're able to do is grab their attention and get them engaged in our story. And using visualizations that communicate with data in a way that they're comfortable. So as we think about this and we look at our, this audience-based visualization, we're using elements that they're already comfortable with. The target audience for this is a manufacturing floor operations manager. They're very familiar with what's going on, what their manufacturing floor looks like. All we did is layer on our analytics so they know areas that they need to focus on and that they can then drill into and engage with the analytics. Be guided by what they're already comfortable with. Using different elements of design principles, we're able to think about what hits what part of their brain, what is going to pull that out, what are they going to relate to, and how do we make that visualization very relatable? Because if it's relatable, we're engaging with them, in the, with them as our audience, and then it's incumbent on us as we've got their attention to get them involved in the story and give them the ability to ask and answer those additional questions. When I think about some of the best audience-based visualizations we've, we've worked with, I think about up in, the upper, up in the upper left, we have a shipping and logistics where we're using icons and we're using a map because it's all about moving people across the country and how we make the icons really easy to engage with and get into. We have this concept of the one on the far right and in the middle where an association holds all these events and they want to know where people are coming from. So how do we show that really crisp, really clearly? We show them where they held events and we let them drill into the map that, pulls, that shows them the spectrum of where people are coming from for that event because that's what they care about. We're also doing it in a way that it grabs their attention. They're used to seeing reports by state or by city. And instead of that, we're giving them two maps to work from. One map that shares where the events took place that then can drill into where people are coming from. Keeping dashboards as expected, being able to use different visualization elements to grab their attention. One of my favorites is the product reviews where we're looking at all of these different products and we're seeing how each product rates on a scale to make it really easy to compare product to product. Be able to engage the user in something that makes sense, that jumps out at them and engages them in what we want them to be involved in. 
once we've started to engage and we get them involved in this visual analytics process and sharing our story and how we engage in that story, then we can start to think about all the things now that start to surface in how we advance analytics. How do we go to that next step? We have visualized, we've reported, we're now wanting to get into some more advanced analysis of what we do and how it matters and how we can leverage it. So when we think about advancing analytics, we have to be ready to ask those deeper questions. And there are all kinds of tools that we use to help our clients take advantage of this and even us. At ESIMO, how we make the most of all the data that is out there and how we're able to pull it in. We leverage tools that exist in the marketplace today to pick up in gaps or to, to seamlessly move data to where Tableau can take fullest advantage of it. Whether we're using AWS APIs to do sentiment analysis, to do voice, taking voice and translating voice to text, data robot building some of our predictive models and using theirs and leveraging theirs, doing custom work with R and Python to pull all of this together. Whether we're preparing data using Tableau Data Management and Tableau Prep Builder or using Alteryx. All of these things come together to help us ask and answer, most importantly, those deeper questions. We good? Our, the key to that is, is when we start to incorporate these tools, when we incorporate these tools and we start to ask deeper questions and we get answers to those questions in our data, then we can visualize the results. So we took a challenge in our office that I, as the CEO, and we measure everything in our organization on Net Promoter Score. Everything. Everybody in our organization is measured on Net Promoter. They have an internal and an external Net Promoter Score. Every quarter, every one of our clients, we reach out and we want our Net Promoter Score. For three years, we've had 80 or better, which is phenomenal in the Net Promoter world. But that's really important to me organizationally and as the CEO to know we're engaging our clients the way we want to engage them. But I wanted, to, I wanted some indicators on where Net Promoter was going. So what we did is we started using our WebEx, our GoToMeeting, and all of our customer engagements and took advanced analytics, an advanced analytical approach, and we started transcribing our messaging that was going through CRM, our conversations, and we started analyzing. And what you see as a result is what we call talk track, which gives us insight into what's the sentiment look like on our weekly calls with clients. We have early indicators of where things are going, if things are going negatively. The biggest insight we found is as clients, nobody wants to be on the phone for more than 37 minutes. Right? When we found out, then we started looking at our status calls and making sure, and our, our sprint calls, and making sure we were keeping them short and to the point. Because we started to be able to use advanced analytics to get at the data we wanted. It also gave us insight into things that were common on the mind of lots of our customers. Lots of our clients were asking questions about data, or they were asking questions about Tableau upgrades, or they were asking questions about new functionality, new features in the tool sets that we work with. What this lets you do is what I want you to think about is how does that translate for questions, that deeper questions that you might need to answer around sentiment, around understanding con contextual cues you're getting from your clients or internally every day by using those advanced analytical tools in Azure or AWS where we can run them through an API and get resulting data, it provides a lot of power for us as individuals. So as we think about our evolution, we're thinking about how we do all the things to measure our success. We're thinking about 
how we get audience-focused visualization, and we use visualization, but we also want to think about how we use advanced analytics. Then one of the key things that a lot of people are talking about right now are how do we put all of this together? And a lot of times that results in an embedding the solution, making it even more seamless. We take our solution that we, that we all have built in Tableau and we find a way to make interacting with it even more seamless than having to go to the Tableau server. Where can we put the analytics so it's where our people who need to consume it are? How do we take advantage of that? How do we use embedding? There are a lot of reasons to embed because we want to take it to that next step. We may want a single sign-on or a single URL so people aren't going here for some internal information and over here for our external customers. Or we, want, may, we may want single sign-on, but a lot of times we also have an audience that may not know Tableau that well. So how can we integrate custom controls and navigation? And then ultimately, in a lot of external cases, how can we monetize data that we weren't even thinking about before? How can we embed and take some information and monetize it or create a differentiating proposition? We have two clients that have gone to market with a brand new product that was just surfacing data they looked at internally to their external clients. In one case, it was a monetization. In one case, it was a value add against their competitors. And, and how much tighter are they to the client who's giving them the information they need to make decisions. When their provider it is giving them the information they need to make better decisions as an organization and they're facilitating it. I mean, we're seeing this in all kinds of industries, but one industry where I never thought I would see it was in the, law, in the legal space. We've, we've watched law firms take advantage of sharing billing information externally. Well, it used to be thought as the most protected information in the world. How much have we billed? How, much, how many hours have we used to date? You know, where are, exposing that created value for their largest clients because they didn't feel like there was a black box of work being done. So they created more value. They made it possible to do that. It also gives us this ability to brand, to put our own wrapper around it, to be able to put it in a framework that is truly us. You know, a simple example is a healthcare case. This healthcare case where we just wanted simple operational information that was quick to understand. What are some basic stats on the first page in text? what's happening in different areas of the hospital, all the way down to what's going on in the emergency department right now, and wrapping it fully in, what is our patient, patient satisfaction at any given time? Being able to take that, move that forward, is a way to put our brand, our framework around it, to use what we need to use. And Tableau's ability to do that with the JavaScript API, the REST API, really gives us a differentiating proposition to go to market. Ultimately, all of these items can make a difference in how we evolve. In this process, what we are looking for what we're always trying to do, as Tableau's blueprint has outlined, is looking for how we evolve. And to do that, we have to challenge ourselves on how we visualize, how we interact with our audience, and how we look to reach out with them. But all of you as individuals have already made a big decision to do that. There are so many sessions, there are so many different events and opportunities this week to see how other people have taken that evolutionary step how they've gotten past the rip and replace report to, get you, to help you identify ways that you can take that back and get people to understand 
how that works, how they can be effective, and what's their best opportunity. The other thing is, is to find those opportunities. Find the opportunities in your organization where you can make the most impact. Find the group that's going, that you, you probably know all of them, the groups in your organization that are gonna be the most receptive to it. It's pretty funny, once you get one of those groups that's really receptive, then they're gonna start talking about how cool their visualizations are and it's just going to explode. And people aren't gonna be satisfied with, hey, just a report that doesn't give me anything to take action on. But the visualizations and the analysis that I can and that I can move forward with. One of the things that we talk about a lot at ESIMO is helping our clients understand how to evolve with Tableau with or without us. That's one of our key tenets, is we don't want to be that group that's always there. What we're trying to do is help our clients understand how they can do this, how they can challenge themselves, how they can go to the next level with Tableau, and how they can evolve. I appreciate your time. Please make sure you complete the session survey, as with all the sessions that you attend over the week, and thank you. Here's my contact information. If you want to learn more about how we help people do this, see us at our booth at 445. Thank you very much.